Hey everybody, Brian here from quantlabs.net. Question came in from somebody on my Facebook Messenger. Very, very la uh, good question. Hi Brian, Quant Lab, what do you mean? What risk do you help people to manage? Market, personal risk, or even data or portfolio risk? So when you look at recent survey that I've been running here at uh, what people focus on out of 59 answers. Most people are either looking at position size, sorry, risk assessment for uh, trading opportunity or market uh, opportunity forecast. So when you look at the word risk in trading, what does it mean? There's so many definitions of it. Of course, it can mean risk management, could risk on portfolio positioning, uh, or optimizing, and that's risk against um, market current, well, I should put in here, current market conditions, uh, risk in terms of your, uh, not just on your risk management in your current positions, but this is this risk on your portfolio as you take on those new positions. And what you're after is obviously maximum opportunity for max profit. See? And then of course, the other one, as I hinted, is this one that a lot of people don't really consider, which is really risk assessment in forward trading opportunity. What do I mean by this? Well, actually, it's the same as this, but there's two levels. But we also have risk of our profile and risk tolerance somewhat the same, but so you can see that there's so many different definitions of the word risk. Let me just put all these the same. Okay. And make them all the same color. Cool. Okay. So Generally, risk is all of these. So risk management is obviously overall risk uh, that we're willing to take on on our positioning. And then there's a number of things we need to consider. Capital deployment and position sizing, right? But when you look at what we're after is our number, well, I would say number one goal in trading, which a lot of people say was, is uh, profit, uh, no, that's number two. I always challenge people on that. Number one goal in trading, capital preservation is your number one goal, not to lose money, right? If you're always losing money, well, you shouldn't be trading. That's why people have jobs, because they're constantly making money. But, based on the risk you're willing to put on, we know about this saying, high risk, high reward. Right? So, this high risk is determined upon how much capital we're willing to deploy on each position, what are our market conditions, current market conditions telling us so that when we put on a position or a set of positions, depending upon what kind of, where we're going to put our capital, uh, how much of that risk are we willing to take on against the portfolio? So here, we need to really understand our capital deployment, really it comes down to how we deploy our capital. So let me give you an example. 
Let's say you have $100. Okay, let's do stocks for easy. Your system's telling you, or your market condition's telling you, if you put in $50 for Apple, and it's going to give you, I don't know, 5% return for the day, and then you're going to put in $25 for, I don't know, IBM, it's going to give you 7% for the day, and maybe twenty-five dollars for I don't know HP, give you three percent for the day. Or let's make it even better. Let's say your system then you put on your position. Your system recognizes that now you're losing twenty-five dollars. What do you do? Uh, so let's say Apple in, in that day. The stock's not uh, approaching $5, but it's actually 7%, and IBM's performing only 3%. So you put on the positions, what do you do? Well, as part of your risk tolerance, again, depending upon your age, where you're at, blah, 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 you can see all the different definitions of what risk really means. It's one word, but it can have so many meanings. So if we know that, in this case, HP is losing $25 or maybe negative 3% for the day, we obviously have to close this position. Many people will still hang on to it. That's why they lose so much so fast. Uh, risk tolerance for each position is usually around, depending upon the stop loss target, can be anywhere from 7 to 12% with automation. It's going to be in that range. If it's greater than 10, I would just close the position to minimize your risk and to minimize your drawdown. Because the traders don't like drawdown. All right, so back to this question. We know we've closed out this position. We eat our loss there, no problem. But here, we set an original target of 5% for the day. 5% target was a target, but in actual reality, we're getting 7%. But now IBM's only given us 3%. Again, risk comes into this. So what do we do with that capital? Do we close this position? Close, maybe take the proceeds and then redeploy it for the day into this higher performing stock of Apple during the day. But this is what we call risk assessment. Very few humans are very capable of doing this. If they have three positions on, being able to watch these in parallel it's pretty hard to do. That's why automation is very important. But you can see that just the level of one very simplistic intraday uh, set of positions on their performance for the day, meaning their daily target that you your, your system's telling you. And also, if you do have losing positions, what do you do with the risk? You close it because your risk tolerance is saying, which is really your stop loss, saying if you hit these stop losses on the downside close okay so again here we have apple performing at seven percent but originally it was supposed to be five for the target but yet we originally set five percent for for uh, hp or sorry for ibm but it's underperforming so we close that position we're still making money close it redeploy to apple to uh, maximize our risk. Okay, it's right here. So again, three simple positions intraday. We want to intraday to to um, to fully understand our maximum opportunity in the market in real time. So again, what is risk? How much are we willing to use? Uh, how much are we willing to deploy in capital? And what are the current market conditions telling us so that we can optimize our risk against other new positions, redeploying capital, and optimizing the portfolio to maximize our upside potential? So if that's not complicated in itself, uh, you can see how risk is a major factor in your trading that very few 
as you can see here in the survey, very few people, because it's only four, five. So basically 5%, 6% or 7% or 8% of people are analyzing their portfolio while they trade in reality. Here and here is secondary. Your risk assessment in the market based upon market conditions, based upon your target levels and what you're trying to achieve is the most important part of your trade. But ver again, very few people consider that because each one of these money management, position sizing and portfolio weighting is not their priority, which it should be. So they're basically pissing in the wind, hoping that something, when they piss, that the piss doesn't blow back onto them when they piss in the wind. And that's basically what they're doing. So they're basically putting their finger or their thumb and seeing which way the wind blows. Bad way to trade. So again, these are just examples of what you need to look for. So let's continue on. So when we put on trades, depending upon our market conditions, that could be a hint. If you look for something on this thing called Google, very important formula, Kelly Criterion. What this enables you to do is because trading is no different than betting, depending upon our performance, here, pull this guy up, Investo, Investopedia. This will tell you, this formula right here, um, will tell you how much you should deploy on, the, on your next position. So, there's, Kelly Criterion is very helpful in this way, where the Kelly Criterion percentage is what you're willing to put on against your entire portfolio based upon your winning and losing performance on your trading. Winning probability and win-loss ratio. So if you are consistently losing, this Kelly, uh, Kelly uh, Criterion Percent will throttle down the next available capital to reduce your risk to protect your account so you're not going to blow it out. If you are... On the other hand, consistently winning with a higher win ratio or win loss ratio, that basically means that you can now increase your percent against your portfolio and how much you can deploy each day so that you can increase your upside. So very important to understand that. Very critical, in fact, to protect your account, but very simple methodology. So. Your risk portfolio can be protected based upon Kelly Criterion as one simple methodology. Risk assessment for market conditions. This is where it gets really important. And this is why a lot of firms will run things like uh, VAR, value at risk, uh, constant uh, statistics on performance and uh, probabilities of market direction in whatever asset which gives you a risk profile and a risk tolerance based on that. So you can use the risk tolerance using this um, Kelly Criterion as an example. Okay. So there's different methodologies. So I just wanted to put that out there. Now, what would I do? Well, I'm going to be trying to explore that, but this is where the automation comes in. We've heard about machine learning, and this is where machine learning is very valuable to have. To be able to apply all these different market conditions and different market data that maybe be able to be trained and figure out um, the probability of market direction using machine learning. This is where I think machine learning will be very useful in risk at many different levels as explained here. Uh, in terms of my system, I think it's really important to really uh, prioritize this and put this uh, three, money management or risk management, position sizing, and portfolio weighting, which is really portfolio optimization as your primary targets in your trading. Because once you develop that, you develop a set of rules. And once you develop those set of rules, you can then use your market 
uh, opportunity forecasting as well as your risk assessment in the markets that will have a set of rules that will meet these targets. And of course, I'm also uh, including stop losses as well as part of that. Now, the other big thing that you need to understand when it comes to stop loss is, well, let me show you. There's been a lot of talk among, uh, if you're doing uh, Forex trading or even any kind of trading using those crappy uh, unregulated brokers. Now, if you look up the term stop hunting, uh, specifically in Forex, Forex for dealing desk, which is trading competition with its customers, or it may simply be large player in the market, bank or hedge fund or whatever. Stop hunters operate best environment where most traders believe that the market is about to move in a certain direction. So they're working against you and against your trading. So you need to understand that. How do you prevent that from signaling to your broker? You build out your trading system and keep track of your own stop losses virtually. And all your risk pricing engine will be uh, developed in your own system if you're a developer. And this is why it's so critical to have these skills. <clears throat> because if you don't have these three, which nobody clearly is not paying attention to, uh, you probably are either losing in the long run or uh, you don't know why you're losing. And there's a lot of reasons why. A lot of other reasons why I'm not going to get into what brokers do uh, that's pretty well next to, to unknown levels. But if you go into my um, channel and you look up two things. Hey there. How's your training going? Let me show you something. Shut myself up. Blah blah blah. If you type in risk, you'll get a lot of a lot of um, videos on that. Now, if you come back and you look at uh, I think six ways your broker, or just six ways should be enough. Six ways your retail broker is screwing you. Hey everybody, Brian. Now, if you watch this, this will clearly explain why your broker is screwing you and how they go about it. So understanding all these unknown things will help you being more successful in your trading in the long run. And then of course, you get the clowns. Let's just do a random search here. Forex trading opportunity. This is usually the one. Uh, I could be wrong here. But there's people out there that are kind of taking advantage of people because that they're new. But these guys will never ever teach you and show you what you need to really need to understand at the um, level that I'm trying to explain here in this document. Hopefully this will answer this person's question. As for my system, obviously I'll be including a lot of this in my own system. So yeah, I do use risk. It's probably my primary reason of, re of, of trading because the risk will also assess your, your target on a long-term and a very intraday short-term basis as well. Hopefully this will help you out later. I forgot to add on another addendum, which is really critical. Okay, so we've talked about um, risk overall, but when you come back to here, what are you trading? Forex, stocks, futures, options, ETFs, fixed income. In order to get the maximum return, which is really profit, we want maximum return. That's critical. Um, so basically, That'll bring us to another level of a discussion. As I said, we have asset class, or classes, which is Forex, futures, options, stock, ETF, um, futures, and then what's the other one? Fixed income. These are all driven now, if we are in order to maintain our max profit, we need to understand how each of these asset classes work. Not only that we have asset classes, but we also have commodities. We have uh, emerging market versus um, developed 
markets, which is kind of basically like seeing the West, more developed countries, USA, Europe, uh, I don't know, Australia, Japan, more mature markets, right? We also have the different conditions that will give us these higher returns, even when you spread out your different areas that you want to focus on. Other areas that you could trade on are index, which is really more ETF versus direct stock. Maybe we should put that versus um, dividend, right? But my goal here in trading is really important. Forex can be a standalone way of trading from a retail perspective, but you can also uh, trade Forex, really more currency on a futures level. If you follow the macro economic level of fundamentals, trading activity between countries, there's trends. So when you understand those trends, you have a higher potential of maximizing your trading opportunity with that and getting higher performer, higher performing returns versus just putting, as I said, you have a hundred dollars in something you want to get $150, but maybe, uh, you only know how to do $110 return. So it's a 25% return versus a 10% return. So if you better understand how the market moves, with the risk uh, under certain conditions, you'll get a higher return on those positions. So if you're deploying capital of $100, why would you want to focus on a return of 10% when you know if you knew how it worked in another asset class may be able to give you a 25% return or even higher. There's always, always market signals and market trading conditions that give you a higher set of, uh, higher set of uh, returns. So for instance here, if you ever decide to take my uh, futures and options course, which is really a build upon another course from UC Davis, which is old fashioned, old school, but in there, there's a module that will teach you under what conditions to trade an option and under what condition to trade a future. So everything's all based upon market regime changes. So for instance, a good example is recently when you have Trump who just became president in November and you get this sudden pop or sugar rush of a 25% pop on the US markets. Nobody saw that coming, but it happened. So you had a nice 25% return over, I don't know, six months, not bad. So even a monkey could trade that, but in the futures and options market, the market's gonna tell you, knowing how to do these courses, that maybe a future's better based upon risk and your tolerance on how much you're willing to, to trade that will give you a better uh, outlook or, or more positive outlook, minimize your drawdown and give you a maximum return. Usually it is in options, but also within options you have, if you have a big capital or big enough account, you may be able to write options versus speculate the option, which even increase your odds when the timing is right. But you've got to again, know that. And that's where the automation comes into play because then you are able to run simulations of all kinds of stuff, um, be it back testing past data or maybe some market. Uh, sorry, some uh, political events or something that will drive these returns in the options area. Now, let's say you do trade decide to trade options versus futures. Are you going to trade, let's say, an index? Are you going to trade a, uh, a commodity? Are you going to trade maybe a financial, for instance, a treasury, U.S. treasury? Because if, if the markets go into, a ta go into a tanker, again, why? Market regime change, right? So if we're coming off the high of the Trump, uh, re high return on the, in the markets in the U.S., 
guess what? Market regime is going to change. And where do we deploy our capital to retain a return and still achieve, hopefully, a maximum return? A lot of money will go into the fixed income, right? Which is really U.S. Treasury for now. But again, market conditions can change because of U.S. debt's too high, blah, 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 blah. It's all based upon the economy, based upon trading activity. So, as I said, you could change within the futures market and the options market, you could, for maximum return, if you want to drill down to that level, you could have a higher return under certain market conditions for uh, commodities, could give you better return, or a a index in a certain emerging market, for instance, somewhere in Asia, I don't know, Indonesia may look good, or South America that's never really taken seriously and they may be on an upswing, Argentina as an example, or even Brazil. But these are the sort of conditions that you're always looking for to understand to get that maximum return. Where do you get that information? Usually it's the futures and market, futures and options market will tell you that let alone the ETF is now becoming a standard as well because it's, it's all about hot money flow and, and tracking that. That's why I do the Bloomberg news consumption every day. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for those trends. But again, this all comes back to risk. Based upon probabilities and what you're seeing, how much capital are you willing to deploy based upon certain positions to give you maximum return? And it's not just based upon today and how you've been performing, there's a bunch of other conditions that will set on how much capital you'll deploy. As I said, Kelly Criterion is another example, but there's many other ways to test that. And again, this is where automation becomes critical to be able to run simulations to understand the different paths of investing or the outcomes. And that's why a lot of firms do all this stuff by doing value at risk against their portfolio, if we put on 100 positions and a mix of that, that weighting on all these different positions, based upon what we predict market conditions will tell us tomorrow or 10 days from now, however long they, they want their time horizon on the investment to be, they'll run all kinds of simulations. Again, why? Market risk, market probability direction, <clears throat> pretty critical. <coughs> This is big picture overview, but this is how the pros do it. Okay, so this is really where the pros play in futures and options. Retail traders can do that too. That's why a lot of traders are not really putting a lot of effort into stocks. Okay, these are direct stocks. Okay, so yes, 19% or 20% do trade stocks. But again, I have a whole mixed audience, but I also do understand this is that I have professional traders as well and probably institutional traders coming from hedge funds and banks. So this chart right here will tell you based upon that technology. How do I know that? When you look at C++ and Python, that's pretty evident. That's probably a lot of institutional players coming and doing this survey because the average retail trader that does know, not know anything about trading is not going to spend a lot of time in C++. They may a little bit in C-sharp, but it's either going to be C++, C++ or Java. So you can see here, it's a little higher than the C-sharp. Okay, so that's what's telling me that I know I've got professional traders, institutional traders being part of this survey. So that's somewhat my reasoning on why you're seeing what you're seeing in the data. But again, this can be um, misleading as well because uh, I'm sure some of these professionals are wanting to learn more about these money management position sizing and portfolio weighting. Okay, so that's stock. And as I said, ETF, that's becoming a new place, uh, not only with options and futures to understand market direction, because that's what's telling you uh, where the where hot money is going, and you can see a lot of that in ETFs. So we've talked about futures. So coming back to the regime change. So as I said, Trump Trump rally, it tapers. The other area people put their money is into financial or treasury, which is in the form of futures or options, which is really can be classified as fixed income. And there's a whole world to learn about 
um, financial, specifically U.S. Treasury, but there's not just U.S. Treasury, but there's other uh, uh, financials as well issued by other banks or central banks. But a lot of com a lot of people cannot play in that. But watching it's very very helpful, and that's where you go into the ETFs because that's really good for micro players that may want to look at um, financials but can't really afford, let's say, a contract for a U.S. Treasury, which is one million U.S. dollars, to put on in the futures market. So therefore, you have to follow through the ETF. But it's good to watch this data, because it says a lot. But once again, this is all risk, and this is what uh, you can use. Uh, risk barometers, also the, the typical oil versus gold. Oil expansion or oil increase in price means an expansion in the economies. Gold is a precious metal. It's a safety haven. People will put money into that when the markets turn. So, uh, pretty long-winded definition of how risk is used. Uh, I still don't understand why people are not putting more efforts in these three other areas, money management, position sizing, and portfolio weighting. Uh, I, I think it's just how they learn, how they trade, how they go through blogs, so on and so forth. But... These are really your primary skills you need to master before you go into market opportunity. And because it's the money management position sizing and portfolio weighting that will not only protect your account, but if you really understand how your portfolio works, you understand the fundamentals explained here, you will uh, over time be able to really understand how to maximize your, your, uh, your portfolio return. Okay, hopefully enough blabbing and uh, that will make sense to you. Over and out.